to help us. And so uh, we understand that you're hurt. And we understand that in that condition it's difficult for you to see any benefit. Well, ask God to heal you because God does not remove the benefit of this, this relationship because you've been hurt. And um, what God will do is heal you. And God will allow you to meet someone that proves to you that all men are not that way. And what God does is very plainly described in the scripture what these men look like. Look at look at First uh, Timothy chapter two. Look at Titus chapter one. You know it says that this man will have his his house in order, his wife and his children honoring him. You know. You don't honor someone who's abusing you. you. You hide from people that are abusing you. So if you see a man whose family loves him and loves being in his company, and you know they're doing things together, he's not like what you experience. Look through all of those 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 uh, definitions there, and God will prove to you that what you experienced was an anomaly. And the good thing for you is that. Through that experience, you can help someone else out mm-hmm. because you're not the only one that's experienced it. But God will be gracious to you to give you a father who really loves you, won't harm you, and will help you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> she got her revenge. <laughs> I think this is this is the thing that will distinguish us as mm-hmm. Christians. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is these these kinds of things where we can forgive others and we don't take advantage of yeah. uh, of people. These are the kinds of things that people will look at us and say, "You guys got something. Yeah. I, I I need it. I want it. My yeah. ways don't work." Yeah. You know, the ninety nine guys that took advantage of the woman. You know, of course, they're gone now. You know, <laughs> right. you know, but you know, if, if they could, if they could say, "Wait a minute," you know, what did, what did you do? That, uh, and, and he's going to say, "Well, I, I refused her offer because it was the right thing to do." And you know, these these are the kinds of things, and especially we need to show our sons this. Amen. Or we're going to keep we're going to keep on the downward cycle mm-hmm. of uh, unforgiveness and. You know, bitterness and resentment and vindication and, and you know all that kind of stuff that's that's at least unchristian. Right. Right. It's not, it, and it certainly is not good for our for our soul. Right. 
It's no good for our body either. Absolutely. 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 That's a critical, a critical point. One thing that we see in the scripture is that God is love. And when people hear the word love, they automatically think of outward show of affection. And that's why Mother's Day is so revered. Mm-hmm. Because there is, when we hear of a mother who does not show affection, we automatically think she is somehow a hater. When we hear of a father who doesn't show affection, we don't have that same kind of thinking. The generations have taught us, at least in the West, and, and, and maybe around the world, but I'll speak to the condition that I know more about, that men who show affection somehow can be seen as soft or, or, or shaky or whatever. Your manhood is exhibited in, in somewhat of your, your harshness and your reserve. But, as you were saying, with showing affection to the wife, mother, is showing affection to the kids themselves. We are at a time where the Spirit of the Lord is really calling the fathers to turn toward the kids. And likewise, it calls them to turn toward us. I just want to say to all the brothers, even if you have never received affection from your father, God gives you the capacity to show it to your children. You can do it. Don't worry about it. Kiss the boy. Yes, kiss the boy. Kiss the girl, too. Tell them you love them. Kiss their mother. You're able to do it. You're free to do it. And it serves them well. That's very good. Very good. Not in in connection with that. That's a high point. This is, this is the whole thing of growing up, and as and we as parents know where our kids are. I mean, you don't you don't give the the razor to your uh, to your eight year old to to go and shave, right. even if he asks for it. You know? sure. I mean, it's sure. uh, uh, you know he's certainly not ready for that. And this is a you know it's a crazy example, but you know we've got we've got to give instructions over and over again and help them through it when they're younger. When they get to be older, you've got to you've got to let them fail, mm-hmm. uh, because they've got to see the they got to see the consequences of what they've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to, and again, you know, some people are artsy, mm-hmm. and they've got to experience things before they mm-hmm. learn. Mm-hmm. And other people are, you know, uh, they're didactic or you know, uh, y- you know, uh, methodical in what mm-hmm. they do, and they can take instruction. You know, do this one, two, three, four, and they will do it. Um, you know, but the artsy person won't do that. So, and you, again, you, if you don't understand that as a parent, uh, you'll get frustrated with that. 